Get on the train Before it leaves the station The truth train is coming Gonna run them down Alright, hello everybody, how you doing? We're here today talking about Exhibit A on Netflix New show that I just uh, saw there and, and was checking it out I watched the first episode it's Very interesting stuff Goes right in line with many things that I've been talking about here on my channel so it has uh, I think 10 episodes I believe it was and the first one had to do with junk science it's all about junk science it's, what, it's called exhibit A but it's about junk science and how junk science gets used and that sort of stuff and so they use real life cases and the first episode uh, centers around video um, junk science with video with you know like surveillance video or whatever so that sort of stuff and how junk science can end up getting used to convict people. And the case that they use is George Powell. And, and it's down in Killeen, Texas, right? And just to give you guys a brief idea of what was going on here, I, I suggest everybody go watch the episode themselves, by the way. But I'm going to show you a crucial part here that's going to show everybody why this case is ridiculous and a sham. Um, but anyway, it starts out, he's just a, a guy on the street there in Killeen, Texas. He actually stays at a motel. Um, he sells CDs. He's a musician, and he sells CDs like a rapper. Likes to rap and, and rhyme and do that sort of stuff. And he makes CDs and stuff, and he was real close with all of the, um, the uh, you know, uh, armed forces uh, that, that were in there. They had a, a base there, I believe, Air Force, Naval, something like that. And so he was real good with all of the... Um, particularly even the retired the veterans uh and stuff but also some of the soldiers and they would buy his cds and that sort of stuff and so he was kind of well known in that area but he did, he had an issue with the police and he would he would often you know see them on the street and start yelling at them and so stuff, stuff like that so he kind of drew some attention to himself unfortunately but then one night or maybe over a couple nights there was two robberies one was at a 7-eleven and one was at another little gas station right and there's a lot of things that go on about this that, that, that's pretty wild. But when it comes down to it in the end, there's actually two things. Because when I Googled this afterwards, there's a second reason why this ended up being wonky. But I don't want to give that away till the end, what happened there. But um, anyway, the, the 7-Eleven clerk was clearly saying that, that the person she saw was about 5'5 five, five or 5'6. Five, five, you know, right, you know, basically somewhere mid-range of the 5-foot area, right? halfway to six foot right or whatever well here's the thing folks george powell is six feet and like six foot four okay he's like i mean a tall guy he's a pretty big dude right okay so ignore these witness statements is of this man being short shorter right got ignored they went after this George Powell anyway, and most likely the reason why they probably, how they talked themselves into this is they probably felt like he was a nuisance, so they probably felt like it wasn't such a bad thing they were doing. But they were ignoring the fact that he didn't fit the description, and they proceeded against him, they convicted him, and he's been in for 12 years now. And he now has this Netflix documentary helping to tell his story. In the Netflix episode, the thing that they center on is this whole height issue. And I'm going to show you something here in a minute that's going to, that they show in the episode that's going to make it pretty clear to you how they, that Powell and the actual perpetrator do not match up. So, <laughs> so what happens here is they go after him, they go after Powell, they get, you know, convict him and all that stuff. So, the way this ends up is... He, Powell gets, I think, well, according to the article, the Innocence Project got involved. So he now has this lawyer helping him. And the, whole, the lawyer brought in a, um, a special, you know, some, uh, a forensic expert, somebody who actually is used to, who actually uses the proper protocols in determining height and stuff, use, basically uses the proper strategy and stuff in determining um, the size of objects in rooms where, in, in a video. They do that by going and measuring the actual room, and they, they do a lot of, there's a lot of, like, you know, calculations that go into it and stuff, right? And then they brought out this thing. It's like a, it sits on a little tripod. It's like a laser detector or whatever, and they have, you know, they have George Powell stand there, and this the laser detector does a complete measurement of 
you know, George Powell's height, breadth, width, so that it, it, it brings up a actual proper representation of him when they, when they overlay it over the video, which I'm going to show you here in a minute. And the fact is that, that George Powell is not the guy that did this. And it's pretty damn obvious. And folks, he's still not out. Okay? He, it's crazy. I'll tell you what happened uh, in the article uh, when we come back. But for now, I want you guys to understand that this guy was just an undesirable, a lot like Stephen Avery. He was an undesirable. He was not, he didn't have a lot of money, wasn't powerful in the area, didn't have a lot of polar influence, you know, had a lot of similarities to Avery in that sense, right? And then they used what you're going to see here is basically really super junk science to convict. And they also did some other things like they bullied uh, the, the, the witnesses and the, and the clerks and you know the only one that wouldn't have it was the one at 7-eleven she stuck to her statement that the perpetrator was 5-5 and that's what helped them to and eventually flesh this evidence out that that the the perpetrator was actually much shorter than George so but they were bullying the clerks and bullying people and and so this is what happens when cops get lazy and I hope I hope law enforcement officers out there around the country I hope, I hope even DA's offices are starting to get educated. We the people are now starting to pay attention. We are looking at this stuff and we're going over it with a fine tooth comb and we are going to eventually, uh, as, more, as, this, as this movement grows, as more and more people join on to this social reform and criminal justice reform movement, you know, it's going to be harder to deny because we're all going over this stuff and we're going, look, this is obvious. This could have been corrected. Before and, and it shouldn't. And before it got ten years down the road, twelve years down the road, fifteen years down the road, when the compensation becomes greater, right? It could be corrected sooner, or not happen at all. And I hope law enforcement agencies and all are out there and are paying attention. Don't do things like what happened to Brendan Dassey when you're when you're dealing with a, a mentally uh, limited juvenile. Don't do it. Okay. Public opinion is coming out squarely against that type of behavior. Okay, Wisconsin may be maybe getting away with it here, maybe trying to get away with it here, but I guarantee you, moving forward, it's only going to get worse. People are only going to start to care more about this issue, about how juveniles are getting treated in our criminal justice system. So, trust me, law enforcement out there, don't do things like this. Don't run a shoddy investigation against somebody you've already wrongfully convicted once. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just saying, I'm just, it's just a little bit of friendly advice from Eric Jose to law enforcement out there. Because trust me, I'm not anti law enforcement. I'm really not. I think, you know, 98% of law enforcement officers out there just want to do their job well and want to do a good thing and want to serve the community and that sort of stuff. And I love those law enforcement officers of course I do but I think sometimes when it comes down to it the chain of command sometimes officers end up just falling in line and doing what is coming down the the, the chain of command whether they agree with it or not and I think that sometimes puts them in awkward things but it's the way that the but that's also the way they operate because they have to all protect each other it's a sticky problem but look guys you're seeing the way that the, the, the interrogation of Brendan Dassey has affected the American people and how very decidedly they are not with it and they don't like it. So don't do it, is my advice. Don't do that. Don't be lazy. Don't, don't, get, don't, get, uh, don't despair because you think you'll never find the actual criminal and try to pin it on some kid so that you can at least tell the public, oh, well, we got the guy. Don't do it. I mean, just don't do it. It's And this here, again, lazy police work. Obviously, this guy was not as short as the, as, the, as, as, the, as the witnesses of this crime were saying. This guy is clearly a tall dude. Very tall guy. And you're going to see that here in these clips. So, all right, I'll come back and talk with you some more in a minute. Let me just show you, you the clip here real quick. from the other view that he was standing erect as he was entering. That would have been the one to properly use if there was only one image. But we also used others. 
Knox was not even aware, evidently, that there were multiple cameras available, and he never went to the scene. And so the night before he testified, he went out to the scene just to say he'd went gone to the scene. He already knew how he wanted to come out. I remember the judge at the trial even mentioned that. Well, you know, I'm convinced it's admissible because he did go out to the scene. Mr. Knox did not follow the methodology. And so this can't possibly be scientific and shouldn't get into court. Now we're into a subjective realm where an expert can do anything. His entire report is that absolutely nothing I did was right. It's suspicious. If you have a dispute between experts that goes to court, it's going to be up to a jury or up to a judge to make a decision. Which one do they give weight to? Which expert do they believe? Uh, sir, would you please introduce yourself to the jury? Uh, well, my name is Michael Knox, and that's K-N-O-X. Uh, I'm a forensic consultant here in Jacksonville. Um, and sir, I... It's hard to call bullshit on a forensic science when your background is not in that forensic science. The judge doesn't know. If it sounds good to him or her, they're going to let it in. And I think jurors, you know, when in doubt, well, the judge let it in. It must be good science. It must be good testimony. I believe we've established a overwhelming case of actual innocence such that he should be released. Okay, so this was the forensic, you know, guy that first came into the case, right? And this is what he made, right? Now, the interesting thing is what he said. This is where he said he figured that the person was 6'1 and all that stuff. What I want to show everybody right here is look at this. Right here. Across from right here. Right? That's about where the top of this guy is. Is right in between the second here and third 7-Eleven mark. And I'll show you a little closer here in a second uh, what that looks like. And then I'm going to show you what the imposed image, superimposed image of George Powell looks like in the doorway compared to these. So, all right, here we all go. Right. Okay, so here we go, right? These are those little sevens that we're seeing, right? In that representation picture from Knox, right? So here are those, these are little sevens just for 7-Eleven. It's just little whatever, 7-Eleven stickers or whatever they put on the door and stuff. And how useful this has turned out that they have that there. I wonder if they put these there just specifically to help them uh, analyze their video. But here they are on the door. So that whenever these doors doors slide open or whatever, you have, they know what these heights are exactly in the video, right? So I, I'm number one because of that. I'm having difficulty understanding how this was so difficult to figure out in the first place. But there we are, right? Now I'm going to point out that in that uh, drawing that was made by Knox, he has the perpetrator's head being somewhere up around here, which I find was odd right because what you're about to see right now what I'm about to show you right now is when they start to overlay George Powell and the actual perpetrator in the video that that perpetrator's head comes out to here and just barely reaches the top of these middle sevens you know so anyway just wanted to give everybody I want to show everybody this so you get a good visual representation of these sevens on the door and and how really how obvious this should have been to everybody right from the start and like I said it it shows that this is another that this is very likely another situation like with Stephen Avery where he was just an undesirable and they wanted to get him out of the way and you know for whatever reason and and instead of instead of wanting to do their job correctly and get the actual guy they just figured ah eh, whatever we'll just pin it on this guy that'll work that's really what it looks like and and the fact is they're still fighting this and okay, folks, so here we go. We get to see what it looks like with the overlay. So here you're seeing the face of George Powell. Here you are seeing the face of the perpetrator when he was walking into the the gas station store, basically. Oh, no, the 7-Eleven, sorry. So you see his face as he's walking. He's walking completely upright. Can't disp dispute that. So he's definitely not bending. He's not doing anything like that. He's standing straight up, walking straight, you know, walking tall, as you would say, right? And this is where the top of his head reaches. Right? Okay? And then here's George. Alright? He's about an inch over that top seven. You know what I mean? I mean, this should have made it, this should have been a slam dunk. Shouldn't have needed, shouldn't have needed any forensic experts for this. 
in my opinion, that some common sense would have solved this. And so, and this is why this is another problem we have with the criminal justice system right now is that common sense doesn't seem to have a place in it. And that's a scary, scary prospect. But here it is. Common sense really should have solved this to begin with. I mean, 7-Eleven had markers on the door that you could easily go measure. And, you know, so there's really no, for me, there's very, no, no real excuse for this wrongful conviction and the fact is that he's still in now there is good news according to the article I just uh, found after I got done watching this episode of uh, exhibit a was that he has gotten and he's been awarded a new trial and you would think it would be on this evidence here but actually it seems to be more about some other evidence about a jailhouse informant who lied about their motivation to testify against him so so uh, we'll go ahead and show you part of that article now and by the way links to that article will be left in the information down below the video for those of you who want to go check it out so uh, we'll move on to that now but I just wanted everybody to see that right I mean right common sense right am I right come on give me a give me a, a hell yes over in the chat come on should have been really really obvious right you know what I mean? All right, here we go into the article. All right, so you see, this is the type of stuff that happens when you have lazy cops, right? Lazy cops that don't want to, they don't want to have to chase down the actual suspect, and so they will sometimes find an easy scapegoat nearby and then pin it on them. And then that way it's, when there's a conviction, it has the illusion of seeming final and seeming done with and over. It has that illusion at times but when the when the conviction is gotten dishonestly well you're gonna find out in the coming years that that's gonna get noticed there's a growing amount number of people out there that are taking an interest in it so you may not be able to fly this stuff under the radar as well in the future moving forward something I would suggest to, to criminal justice system law enforcement and everybody moving forward you know we the people don't want you know the people who are supposed to help maintain order running roughshod whenever they feel like they don't want to have to do their job because they don't want to have to chase down the actual bad guy let's just plug this guy in because that's clearly what's happening here. there's plenty of evidence to suggest that he's not the guy he's way too tall I mean, that alone should have done it. That alone should have told the policeman, oh, whoa, yeah, we're, no, this isn't the guy. This is the wrong guy. We got the wrong guy, guys. But no, they didn't want that. They viewed him as undesirable, and so they just plowed forward. Bad move. Bad move. All right? And then you bring in this guy, Knox, who brings in his junk science to help you try to say it is whatever... You know, by getting him to say that the person in the in the video is six one, that's BS. That's BS, total BS. And so it's like those people. It's like that one lawyer. You know, um, uh, uh, George Powell's lawyer is saying in that one clip I played, where he's like, "Who knows about the, whether it's junk science? Nobody knows enough to to question an expert in their field. The judge doesn't know. Usually, the lawyers in the courtroom don't know enough." They don't, I mean, they don't know enough about that specific that specific science to be able to specifically point out where they've made missteps and why the junk why why the the science is flawed. They they're not equipped to do that. So if it and he says, you know, so the judge oftentimes thinks if it just sounds good, then he'll say, okay, yeah, let it in. So part of the problem we also have to face here is getting our criminal justice system to be better informed. That's why things like Dean and Jerry Dean String and Jerry Buting. Uh, are doing over in Wisconsin with the, their organization, CIFS, Center for the Integrity of Forensic Sciences, um, where we'll hopefully we'll be able to do better inform our courts in the future and be able to get throw out a lot of this junk science that seems to get used. Um, but these are all things we have to do moving forward, and we have to take an interest, folks. It's part. It's our responsibility too. It's not. It's not fair to just sit there and rail at law enforcement and everybody else. It's up to us to be involved too. 
because we voted these people in or, you know, for DAs and stuff like that, often they're voted in, you know, and that sort of stuff. Chiefs of police are voted in. So we have to accept a certain amount of responsibility on ourselves, you know, as well. It's up to us to build the world we want. And, and the question is, is what we're seeing in our criminal justice system right now, are we happy with that? If not, we need to do something about it. And the criminal justice system is not inclined to want to change because their job, they feel their job is hard enough already. So they're not inclined to want to go shaking things up and changing things. But it's going to take the people getting involved and using their power to vote and, 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 and you know, various other things to help bring our system more into the modern age. That's what's necessary. So what we're going to move into now is an article about George Powell and about his case. It's basically going to be letting us know that he has been awarded a new trial by the appeals court. Um, so he's going to have a brand new trial. That means he gets to re-argue his entire case again. This time they're going to be able to add in their forensics uh, about the video footage and they're going to be able to show how much taller George is than the actual suspect. So I feel good for George. I feel good that he's very soon going to be seeing the light of day. And when he does, He's going to start putting out. He's, he's, been in, he's been in jail and he's been writing. He's got pages and pages and pages. And first thing he's going to do when he gets out, he's going to head to a studio. And trust me, after Netflix doing this show about him, he's probably going to have a number of people lining up to pay for his studio time. You know? Sending professional musicians over to maybe even to help him and, 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 and be on the tracks with him or that sort of thing. I mean, I'm sure after this documentary, when he, when he finally you know, wins his case in his retrial he's probably going to find that he's going to have all the studio time that he wants so um and more power to him you know he had to spend 12 years in jail for a crime he didn't do it's pretty obvious he didn't do because he's clearly not the guy in the video because he's just too big dude's huge man he's totally huge so all right we're gonna move into the article and then okay we'll so here's that. a little bit of an update for you folks of what's happening in his case uh so appeals court grants george powell a new trial Innocence Project hopes to clear the robbery conviction. So there's George there. George Powell, convicted in 2008 of a Killeen uh, aggravated robbery, will be brought back to Bell County for a new trial after the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals ruled Wednesday that he gets a second chance to prove his innocence. Powell was sentenced to 28 years in prison after his conviction for the robbery of a Killeen 7-Eleven. He has now served about 12 years of that sentence. The appeals court said Powell was denied due process when the Bell County District Attorney's Office failed to disclose impeachment information about a jailhouse informant to the defense, presented false testimony from the same witness, and failed to correct that false testimony, the ruling said. So basically what it comes down to is he's getting a new trial because the a due process violation because the 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 district attorney's office number one failed to disclose impeachment information right and you're gonna find out what that is coming up in a minute here i think pretty sure and and that information wasn't passed to the defense that witness ended up giving false testimony and then they failed to correct that false testimony so because of these reasons uh, he, you know, has been granted a new trial. So, okay. It was stated in the ruling with Dimitric, Dimitric Smith, a jailhouse informant, impeached himself by testifying in exchange for favorable treatment in his own criminal case. Ah, uh, so there was a carrot for him if he testified, see? Smith said in his testimony he had no deal with Bell County for his testimony and was only testifying because he wanted to do the right thing. Okay, so that would be a lie that testimony was found was found during a habeas corpus hearing to be false and the district attorney's office never corrected smith's false testimony documentary to air that's the one we, that i'm that i just watched and caused me to look up this article a netflix originals documentary series exhibit a premieres friday with a focus on pal's case the series focuses on how flawed or misapplied science can lead to wrongful convictions. The Innocence Project of Texas hopes the documentary will point out just how innocent Powell is and that the actual robber is a different person who, did, who didn't even look like Powell, 
who is about nine inches taller, or uh, who is about nine inches taller than the robber is reported to be. The store's digital recording shows the clear difference. In uh, the Innocence Project of Texas, uh, Executive Director Michael Ware said, Ware said he saw the handling of the Powell case as prosecutorial misconduct. I have to agree. I mean, they're ignoring the obvious logic. I'm sorry, but that's what's happened. That's what happened. They ignored obvious freaking logic. So I got to agree on that. In addition to filing a motion for reconsideration of the actual innocence claims, where will ask for the state to sanction the Bell County District Attorney's Office for the unconscionable behavior of Bell Co County prosecutors. Where said that uh, that office didn't want truth or justice. It only wanted a conviction and don't want to set right the wrong that they did. Yeah, I have to agree. Because here, here, here he is 12 years later still in. And even though it's clearly not him in the video. Bell County prosecutors didn't disclose evidence to his trial lawyers that might have resulted in Powell's acquittal, the court said. In accordance with the decision, the case against Powell has been remanded for a new trial. District Attorney Henry Garza said in an email response to Telegram questions about the case, Accordingly, George Powell will be returned to Bell County and we will proceed to try the case again. See? They're all in. In for a penny, in for a pound. You see what I mean? This is why we need conviction integrity units, folks. These guys are these guys are bigger criminals than the people that they're trying to convict. And sometimes, sometimes they are. Certainly here. It's unconscionable. That was a really good word for it. It's unconscionable that they would have this attitude. With all the evidence that's, you know, pointing to somebody that it wasn't that it wasn't George Powell. This is just uh, this reminds me of Kim Worth and Devontae Sanford again. I mean, it's just, oh, my Lord. This is why we need conviction integrity units working in our DA's offices and rooting things like this out. Because, obviously, the DA's themselves are going to want to cover their butt. That's I'm sorry. That's just the way it is, folks. It's the writing on the wall. I read the opinion and do not find the words mentioned by Michael Ware within the opinion. Neither do I believe that the process that occurred in George Powell's original trial to be consistent with that characterization, Garza said, we are prepared to confront whatever allegations are made by Mr. Ware. Yeah, good for you. Let's see how that goes for you guys. I'm going to be following this trial with great relish. A second trial, a new trial date attorney, the judge will be addressed when Powell returns to Bell County, Garza said. Previously, uh, prosecuting Powell were Paul McWilliams and Leslie McWilliams. The trial judge was former 27th District Court Judge Joe Carroll. Bell County Defense Attorneys Michael Magana and Bobby Verena previously defended Powell and both criticized the way the case was handled by the District Attorney's Office. Mm, interesting. Bell County's 27th District Judge John Gaunt recommended that the Court of Appeals should grant Powell a second trial. Ah, well, the judge seems to have a little different opinion than the prosecutors in this. Uh, so that's that's uh, that's a positive sign. Uh, the recommendation came after numerous hearings in his courtroom that started in 2017 and continued until January 30th of 2018. Ah, so he was granting evidentiary hearings. Ah, another. I like John Gaunt. Certainly a breath of fresh air compared to Judge Sukowitz. Anyway. Presenting the prosecution during the hearing, presenting the prosecution during the hearings was Assistant District Attorney Sean Proctor. Gaunt eventually issued a 109-page finding in February. The original judgment in the 27th District Court of Bell County was set aside, and Powell, who is imprisoned in Gatesville, will soon be placed back into Bell County Sheriff's Department custody to answer the charges set out in the indictment. A bench warrant for his return will be issued within 10 days after. The this after the court's new ruling the innocence project of texas will ask for a reasonable bond uh, to be set for powell can be released pending his final disposition of this case while we will be thrilled when he is released we will not stop fighting until we receive powell's full exoneration so it's you know like i said this is this case has a lot of stuff running through it that's just like you know that's very similar with stephen and brendan um, and what happened in their cases. Uh, Powell's ex-wife um, uh, said that Carl Ortiz, a clean police officer at the time, told her 
told her Crime Stoppers would pay her $1,000 if she helped to prove Powell was guilty. Yeah. See what I mean, folks? That's the kind of lazy police work I'm talking about. I mean, that's exactly the type of thing that I'm talking about. Um, I think it's a big step in the right direction that the court has acknowledged the deception perpetrated against George. Absolutely. And his rights to a fair trial. Absolutely. Uh, I also thank the Innocence Project for continuing to fight to prove the obvious he is innocent. There you go. Well said. Um... Parsons thinks the trial should be moved to another county because he doesn't believe Powell can get a fair trial in Bell County, she said. Judging by the way that these DAs are acting, I think there may be something to that as well. I think that may be a valid concern, although I do like the current judge. And I think I think he's likely to make sure it's absolutely fair and above board. Um, so uh, I don't know. I don't know. I guess I'm kind of undecided on that, but... That's what it comes down to, folks. This is how, these are the common seams that run through wrongful convictions. And I love that there's more and more of these shows popping up on Netflix that everybody can get to see, that everybody, you know, gets gets access to, you know, or most people do. And, and that more and more people are getting an education on what these things look like and what can be hopefully done to prevent them in the future. So that's what's going on with his case in the present. Um, and so I will definitely be following what's going on with his retrial with great relish. So there we are. Another very interesting case, you know, where it shows the, you know, the, the similar seams that run through wrongful convictions and, and the way that these things happen. Um, like I said before, things like the CIFS started by Dean Strang and Jerry Buting. Those are the type of things moving forward we need to help, com to help the courts be more informed. So that they can understand when they're seeing junk science. that when the, So they can notice it when it's coming into their courtroom. Because think about it. Judges and lawyers, they aren't forensic experts. So how are they exactly supposed to find the flaws in, in an expert's analysis? Right? It requires another expert to do that, right? But unfortunately, the defense, unlike the state, doesn't always have bottomless pockets to bring in expert after expert after expert to to disprove everything because the state has bottomless pockets they can bring in all they want right so this this the defense isn't always in that position of having bottomless pockets so they're more hard pressed to counter expert testimony and this is some of the inequities in our justice system you know um, I think there truly should be a limit set on what the state is allowed to spend and and, and, and that sort of thing on experts and all that sort of stuff because if 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 they're not if, if the defendant can't can't meet that for himself to be able to bring in the experts to combat the state's you know experts then he's at a disadvantage so then the, it you know and and if that's the case then the state should have to whatever they're forking over for their experts they should have to give an equal amount to the defense to bring in experts for themselves right you know it's the, the you know it's it's sad but that's an inequity in our system that the defense doesn't always have bottomless pockets like the state does and so there certainly should be limits set on what the state can do in my opinion and here they've just you know that district attorney's office is a mess you know you saw it in that article that's a mess they're still they're still gonna you know claim that this that they got the right guy even though he's nine inches too tall, and they're going to still stand by it. This is what we're this is what we're combating in our system, folks. These there's cancerous people that we need to get voted out of power, all over the United States that are allowing these things to happen, and allowing these things to continue. And uh, and don't think that Paul Howard over in Georgia uh, is going to be forgotten by me because he won't. There's another corrupt DA absolutely a corrupt corrupt bastard uh so yeah anyway so that wraps it up for this one folks i thought this was very interesting i can't wait to watch some more of these episodes of exhibit a on netflix i encourage everybody to go out there and check it out themselves i'll leave the link to the article that i was uh reading uh down below and uh it's been a pleasure if you haven't already please hit subscribe and we'll see you